Welcome back to the Man Cave. It's time for the Man TF Up podcast. I'm Kimmy B, and you are, sir. Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, Len, you are in for it today. Before we go any further, though, please, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, share, follow, any and everywhere. Uh, we try to put up a new podcast every single week unless I get flaky, of course. But we've been pretty consistent since we started. Len, we've done like 24 of these. This will be our 25th. Oh, my God. It's almost it's a like half a silver a year. anniversary. It's almost six months. It's a silver anniversary. It's crazy We're having our silver town. anniversary. You might take me to dinner once. Uh, not true. Bourbon. Oh, that's right. Also, uh, did you end up paying that night, or did somebody else? Pick up no, the I paid. Oh. I paid for us. You were. That was precious. Thank you. It was kind of business, though. I was just saying, if we're celebrating uh, the anniversary, there were a bunch uh, of other people uh, there. I ended up. I I've ended invited up, you a few times. I ended up in a screaming fit with somebody. I was quite the embarrassment, actually. So my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That. I was me. He's like, at least she's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Lenny, Lenny, you're good for that though. Like, yeah. what would it take for somebody to actually embarrass you? To embarrass me? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. My kids could probably do it <laughs> uh, because that's a direct reflection okay. on me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yep. So that that's that's you know, I mean, early on, my wife learned never. Open your mouth if and contradict me if ah. I'm, I'm saying something I love the way that might not that. might be exaggerated. So basically, don't call you out on your fishtails. Yes, basically. I had to explain that to my son the other day when we were going to look at a new car. I'm like, if they ask anything about the Raptor, and I say no, it's all good. Don't say, but Dad, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Remember when you went off roading and you broke the front axle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Actually. you know, it's you know those that that kind of stuff that my kids could embarrass me if I feel like that'd be more like a manners thing or something yeah I mean it, but my I, my kids don't embarrass me so it doesn't doesn't really matter but it, someone else no I think okay. it's funny yeah like you know Len's like Kim <laughs> he's like your scallops are here <laughs> the food's getting cold Old. You know, and I'm like, shut up! I'm having just because a I brought some crazy bitch to dinner doesn't mean you know. Are you calling me a bitch? It's not going to bother me. You just call me? No, I'm just saying in oh, general. general. I'm not very talking about you. I'm, we're talk <laughs> I'm talking about a very specific situation. <laughs> oh, oh, no, and you're no, generalizing. No, and I'm folks general. at home watching and listening might be confused as to whether or not you just referred to me as a bitch, which did not happen for or, the record. But crazy's okay. But crazy's okay. <laughs> crazy's okay. Yeah. We're all situationally crazy, and that conversation. Took me to that place, but it's all love. Uh, speaking of, of things that take me to that place, my job takes me to that place. We have talked ad nauseum <laughs> about work things on the Man TF Up podcast, but I think that's because for both of us, Lenny, so much of our lives revolve around work. Yeah. Right? And dealing with other people. And other people. Yeah. So it's kind of like that's a, it's a great point of reference. There's headlines we see in the news on social media stories that people tell us about mm -hmm. situations that they've come in contact with and then things we experience every day firsthand yeah um and i gotta say recently um i had a situation at work uh, with a person who's a member of our team and it just it's starting to frustrate me because you know the longer you work with people um i think the more the boundary, it's like dating, right? The more the boundaries come down and, and you can only put your good foot forward all the time for so long, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, what is it? Like the six, the, six, the six month mark in a relationship, you start to see the real person if they've been trying to put on a front, like the crazy girl who's trying to pretend like she's not crazy. She can only be not crazy for so long. Yes. Right? Before all of a sudden she just, she cracks yeah, and you and see the crazy. You know, and also with that comfort level comes... Yeah. You know, vulnerability. Uh, yeah, it just it comes with. I mean, the more comfortable you get with somebody, the more you push boundaries, the more you do this, yeah. the more you do that, and then one day the motherfucker snaps, and yeah. you don't even know why. So, here's the thing. I'm. I'm. This is a blessing and a curse. I'm pretty much who I am, all the time. Good, bad, ugly, all of it. Like, I don't really know how to tailor. I can fit in anywhere. So that's a that's a different situation, but like in a work scenario, like I'm intense. If you can't tell. <laughs> if you've watched any of these, I'm sure you can tell. Um and I take my job very seriously and I I have very high expectations for my team, but the expectations are nothing that I don't put on myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I also 
will always go to bat for my team. I will never throw you under the bus to anybody. I believe what happens in a studio in the man cave happens here, right? Like, I will joke with Len about making me cry, and I know that he's sensitive about that sometimes, but it's because I love you. Like, and I don't take, like, we can be in that space, and it doesn't affect what we do when we sit down to shoot a podcast or if we go out to cover something else, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we have a, an incredible personal relationship and then but even if we were to get in the worst fight ever, we could still come in and do a podcast. Yeah, I think so. I don't even think so. Like I, I know so because we've had some, <laughs> we've literally had yeah. some moments and then sat down and shot. But I'm a man, so you know I forget what? things instantly. Okay, you, you know, know what? That what were we fighting okay. about a half hour You're, ago? So, so thank uh, you. But why, why I, is my dinner cold? I, what the, what, what did I do? I appreciate that the was segue. so fucking yesterday. I appreciate the segue because <laughs> clearly, that is not a carte blanche rule because the person that I'm talking about is also a man, and he certainly doesn't forget things. Um. And it's beginning to frustrate me a little bit because, like, if you have to criticize or critique something that he does, and he plays a very important role on the team, he can't come back from it. Like, and the more intense it is, the more obvious that it's fucking with him is. And, you know... What we do is a high pressure situation. Like, you know, if you watch the podcast and you know, I also do morning radio. Miami's a very big market. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and again, I stress the word live. This is not a pre recorded show. Every time we crack the mics, it is us, you know, having a conversation. Um, and there's a lot of pieces that go into that taking callers. And now you have things happening on the app, and there's contesting, and there's topics, and we're playing black back clips yeah. sometimes of the mantee of a podcast um it's like an air traffic control yeah situation. and so and his role is really the facilitator of all of the technical behind the scenes things and you know with time people get very quick at it now here's the deal both myself and, and my co-host have sat in that seat and have done all of it we've conducted the train you know what I mean? We've been first chair. We've run the mics. We've taken the calls. We've done the editing. We've run the board. We've done all of it. Like, I've, I've been that person. There's videos on Facebook that you can see me literally. And I might tell somebody, shut up, I'm trying to edit. Like, I'm that person, you know? And then I'll come back and find it. That wasn't really about you. Um, but he just doesn't deal well. It's it's not that he doesn't deal with, well with pressure, but when he fucks up or he he perceives that you feel he fucked up, he just shuts down. And... As a person who's like, listen, you can. I'm all for being in your feelings. That's I'm. I'm not telling you don't be emotional about it. Don't be hard on yourself. I'm not because I'm super hard on myself. But in this environment, you got to keep it move, like moving. It's kind of like in football when you know there's a, a saying about defensive backs, like if they get burned on a play, yeah. or even for a wide receiver, if you or a quarterback, if you throw an interception, it's it's called it's selective amnesia. You've got yeah. it like that play never happened, yeah. right? Um, and that's kind of how radio is. It's how this is. I think it's how business is. You make a bad decision in business. You can't dwell on it, no. right? You can't walk into the next day and, no. and it's hanging over your head. Like, you got to keep it moving. What's next? And he just can't. What's next? And I'm just like, I watch him. And today I ended up having to text my co-host. I was like, yo, the attitude and the sulking. And then it becomes slowness because it's now it's in it's impacting mm -hmm. his ability to actually function and do the job that we need him to do and i'm like and the, i clearly already don't have patience like and i'm honest about that i'm super honest about that but again i expect that because it's what i expect of myself and i've done that job mm -hmm. so buddy either do it or get the fuck out of the seat and i'll come over there and do it and i think you want your job so you know and, and then i look like a bitch because I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the nicest person before the show and after the show. You can cry on my shoulder. You know what I mean? We can talk about therapy together. I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to manifest with you. I'm going to do affirmations with you. When the fucking show is done. When it's done. Mm -hmm. But while we're working, get the fuck over it. Put on your big boy pants and man the fuck up. You're asking for a lot. How? You're asking because people aren't wired like that. It's funny because that just like makes me think about Joey playing basketball. You know, like he, they have a good team, right? The travel league team. Mm -hmm. It's a good team. But the minute they miss a couple shots, get down by five, mm -hmm. get down by eight, they're like lethargic. I'm like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You know, and I try to stress to my kids that, okay, you fell, get the fuck up. 
you know, yeah. the play's still going. Get the fuck up. You know, you missed a shot. Doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You know, and that that that's a that's a hard thing for people. You know, they get they they get flustered. They get they get all up in their feelings. Okay, I I and it's it's strange because I deal with a lot of different people, and trust me, everybody fucks up. Every, everybody, everybody fucks Hi. up. Oh, listen, I fuck up. On the I regular. fuck up. You know, I fuck up a lot. I, you know, when I when I fuck up, I fuck up big shit. You know, it's just <laughs> the point is, you know, some people here might think I like to micromanage. No, I I like to have things done the way I want them done. It's mm-hmm. my company. This is what I want to do. I want it done this way. You know, uh, you got a better way. We'll and talk about it. But you know, by the way, that is a management style. Yeah. Right. That's, I mean, micro. It, it's it's not necessarily a negative thing because some people need. Some people actually enjoy being micromanaged. There are people out there who like to be told exactly what to do, what is expected of them, how to do it, and they will knock that shit out of the ballpark. I f- I feel you. And there are certain things that look. You want to take it on your own? Okay, go ahead. Go run with it. Fall on your face. I don't care if you do it. Great. If you don't, great. But and I'm also big on people just owning your shit. Own your shit. But like, you know? so if you say that, so for, for, cause I think not that we're in different situations, but you're the boss. So it's a little bit different. I'm not necessarily the boss. We're in a very, we're very much in a team situation. Right. But for you, when you say own your shit or like fall on your face, it's kind of like, okay, when you come back, it, it's almost like a dog that I don't want to call your, I don't want to call the employees dogs, but you get the point. It's almost like coming back and at least being able to say like, my, team, my bad. I tried my it my team, way and it didn't work, Len, but like being able to own that. My team brings me ideas. Okay, great. This idea looks good. How much is it going to cost us? Thousand dollars. I'm like, all right, go ahead. Set it up. Get it doing. See mm-hmm. if it works. You know, I'm not crying over the thousand dollars we lost. Mm-hmm. Don't try and say, oh, well, but because of this, because of that, because of this. No, because it just, it didn't work. work. (laughs) It's that simple. It didn't work. You know, if you make a mistake, fine. We'll fix it. We'll do whatever. I mean, it's it's just say, hey, I made a mistake. Let's go. Let's go on. You know? It's the excuses. It's the extra. It's the conversation after or the, the, you know, in the immediate aftermath of something that can make or break, I think, how somebody like you or I responds or feels about you as a team member. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I have no problem with you explaining what happened, especially if I don't understand what happened. If I ask you what the fuck just happened, it's like, why Why did we have in radio dead air? Or why did that call, like, oh, this, 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 okay, cool. But when it's like the constant, and it's like, no, you fucked up. You didn't pull this, you weren't ready, you weren't paying attention, you're slow, like, like that's where I start to get frustrated. Yeah, I'm not here, you know, I'm, I have got something on my mind, sorry, I'm running a little slow today, I'm gonna try and work it out. Yeah. Just, that's it. Own it. Own it, and then fuck off. <laughs> get it together. Yeah. Because, like, we we don't have, there. there's some there's some careers and jobs where <clears throat> you don't really get time to be in your feelings. Again, like I said, I'm all for feeling the feels. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Always. But do it before or do it after. Like, and when you work in entertainment, it's like an athlete, right? You don't get to bring the fight you had unless it's going to help your game with your wife. And I hate to always make sports references. It's just the other thing that I understand and have been around a lot. Um, with you onto the field. Unless you know for a fact that that frustration will make you do your job yeah. better. But most of the time it does not. It's a distraction, right? So what do you do? You compartmentalize. Whoop, this goes over here. Now I come out and we're focused on what's what's right right here. We're on the radio for four hours a day. That's a long you time. Can, but you can compartmentalize for four Absolutely. hours, right? I've had to do it. I've been going through, I told Len before we started the podcast, you know, horrible breakup where literally I would get up in the morning, go to work. When I was done with my show, done with everything, I'd go to the gym, I'd go home, I would take NyQuil. This is, I don't recommend this at home because I just wanted to sleep. Like, mm-hmm. and anybody who's ever been through heartbreak understands that when all you want to do is be awake the hours that you need to be awake and just not be awake the other hours, mm-hmm. right? Um, crying all the time. But when I got on that mic, you had no idea what was going on. My friends used to think that I was like, that they were like, this is scary because I'd be having like the late night conversation. <laughs> Hold on for me. So they'd be like, girl, you were literally just doing the (gasps) cry. 
like how did you just turn it on and off? And it's like, that's my job, right? It's not my audience's fault that my boyfriend's a dick, like, right? And unless I want to share that part of it, but I can only share that when I'm not going to literally be hysterical yeah. crying because that yeah. impacts the, the quality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now we're on a podcast and I can sit here and talk about that moment in my life. And I share stories like that on the radio all the time, but you have to learn how to separate, you know, personal from business. And, and again, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going to get dragged for saying that. I don't know if that feels well, that's, that's, that's another, insensitive. That's another issue because <clears throat> when you work on a close knit team, Mm -hmm. you tend to get personal. No. And and can I tell you something? I want that. Like, because I work so much, I look at the people that I work with as family. You know what I mean? They're just an extended, like, I want you to come to my house. I, like, let's have dinner. We can go out. Like, all of that. But that also means you have to know that when I'm critiquing or criticizing, and I, I expect a little bit of leeway. The same way, even if you fuck up, I'm going to forgive. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I may come on down on you hard. Listen, if you become part of a family team like that a work family a team people are going to expect you to perform at the level that they perform at mm -hmm. it's just that fucking simple you know there's not a job in any of my shit that i wouldn't do myself i there's nothing i take out the trash i'll fucking mop the floor i'll yeah vacuum up the fucking dirt i don't care it's just and i and i expect the same from from the people around me, you know, it's just if you're gonna if you're gonna if I'm gonna make 110 percent effort, and you're gonna be part of a team, you got to make that same 110 percent. One, yeah, but I I guess the other part that frustrates me a little bit though is coming, and now I'm gonna make it about men versus women, because as a woman, if my reaction to being criticized <laughs> was the same as this person, right, this member of my team's reaction. The conversation behind closed doors or the conversation right to my face because I am a part of a team like that where we don't hold things back would be get the fuck out of your feelings. Like stop being mm -hmm. a, like like you're being emotional, like get over it. Right. Like such a woman. This is, you know, see, this is why, you know, women are this is why people think women are so emotional. Right. And it's just funny to me because in business. I'm a dude, like, I, like, I've been around a lot of strong dudes. Like, I'm kind of like, I don't want to call myself an alpha, but I guess maybe a little bit. I have no problem going toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. If it has to do with the quality of the product we're putting out, if it has to do with, like, super serving a client, like, I've had fights with salespeople, but it's not out of disrespect. It's, I want to make sure you look the best, I look the best, our station looks the best, we all eat, we all make money, and the client continues to spend with us. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's the goal here, isn't it? And if I have to talk to you a little gruffly or a little more aggressive than you're used to in order for you to get the point because you're slacking, not me. I'm going to do that because and at the end of the day, I have both of our best interests at heart because we're on the same team. And that has definitely come back to bite me in the bat in, in the ass. I've, you know, difficult, demanding. She's um combative, aggressive, like it, just, it makes me laugh. But a dude that does this is a leader and it's demanding, but in a different way. He's a little it, bit of an asshole. Yeah, but, you know, but, but he, he gets, gets the job done. done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he gets the job done. And, and I'll tell you what, that is literally what anybody I've ever had one of those conversations with. Bet you their fucking client to this day is still talking about me or came with me when I left my old state. You know what I'm saying? Like that works. That level of service that I expect from you is the same level of service I expect myself to provide for your client, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so why do I care more about your client than you do? Why, I can't care more about this product that we're putting out on the radio than you do when you are the last line of defense, right? And that to me is like, I just, I don't know if I, it's just a pride thing that I, I don't know where that comes from, but I don't give myself the option of being in my feelings for the four hours I have to do my job. I get that too, but you know, in in your in your I don't know what I don't want to say defense, but in the defense of women in the workplace, um, you know, you have had to fight more for the same things that men get, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. straight out there. So that's probably made you a little tougher and a little more, mm -hmm. you know, structured and you know difficult um <laughs> sure I'll, I'll, I'll take it whatever you know i mean it but it, it's part of it but that's 
that's the difference between successful women who embrace what they have. Yeah, it wasn't easy. It was harder than any man had to go through. Mm -hmm. But you did it and you're there. So now I'm at this level. I'm not letting anybody drag me down. Yeah. So you have more to lose because it was harder for you well, to 100%, get. 100%. And I won't get the opportunity as quickly as, as either one of them yes. will. For sure. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know, it's, yeah, you're going to be, you should be more aggressive and more concerned and more critical of what's going on. But. Like I, you're not that you're a tough one to talk to, but I know you've just always been an entrepreneur and you've kind of always been your own boss. But it's like as you're saying that in defense, and you might be a little bit more aggressive. It's like I'm thinking of my tone. Like in the conversation I had today with my co-host was exactly that. I'm like, yo, do you think your tone isn't aggressive? And he's like, I know that it is, but you know, if I'm doing it, then you can't do it too. And I'm yeah, like, men can be assholes. That's what I'm <laughs> saying, and it's so fucking unfair because at the end of the day, it's like respected when it's a man, and when it comes from a woman, it's like, <gasps> like, what do you want me to do? Fucking like make you a milk bottle? I don't get it. <laughs> like, why can't I be as hard? Why you can't know. I have the same expectations for you without being a demanding over the top? Like, and I don't care. Like if that's if that's how you want to look at me, like I pride myself on that because I'm good at what I do, and the fact that we teach, I don't know. Like you got part two to this too, which is know. you know, men depending on how they're raised might not take criticism the same from women as they do from Get, men. Man, the fuck up! It shouldn't I, matter. I. It shouldn't matter who I'm the, fuck the criticism it, is coming. Am from. I saying it should matter? Am I? I'm not saying it should matter. I'm just saying that. That's you have to look inside of the man you're talking to, and no, because you wouldn't, because you're not looking inside the fucking woman that you're talking to. Not in business. I feel you. Not in business, and you. that's and that I think is is the difference. But when we talk about equality, I get it. But when 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 for me, when I think of feminism and I think about equality, it's not about burning a bra. Like it, it's not about those things. To me, it is literally being able to walk into a place of business and not only be paid what my male peers are being paid, but you get know? the respect that. 100%. Deserved of your position, like, but but also just not have not have that be the sentiment, like, oh, she's so mean, like, why? Because I'm a woman, like, I'm only mean because I'm a fucking woman, like, like I don't know what you expect from us, like, I'm I'm a boss, like, I don't want to say like I'm a boss, but it, it it's you wouldn't be as taken aback by like you think any of your male counterparts are gonna take into consideration how the fuck you feel about what they're saying. Well, but here there's a flip side to that too. You know, Sorry, I'm swearing his a lot. feelings, his feelings. You know, if he if he got all up in his feelings like that around alpha males, mm -hmm. they might just let him have it. Like, yo, what, what's what's the matter with you? Why what, did I, why are you crying? You know, I mean, it's like well, and and the thing is, it's not even that. It's not even a crying thing. It, it's but you know what I'm saying. No, no, I do. But because no, because here's the deal. There's emotional like, and it's like, and you're pouting, and yeah. then there's just where you can tell that it's shit. impacting <laughs> your job, right? Where you're thinking about it and you're dwelling on it, and it's now like you can dwell on it when we're done here. Mm -hmm. Dwell on it while you're sitting in traffic on 95 going home. I'm not saying don't dwell. I'm not saying don't think about things. I'm a dweller myself. I will go home and run over, and and you don't get to hide behind the whole I'm my, my hardest critic I'm my biggest critic so am I but again what I'm not going to do is allow one mistake right now to fuck up whatever I've got going on while I'm doing my job for the rest of this day this moment whatever this is right like you can dwell when you leave you have to learn to pick yourself up dust yourself off and keep it moving like I'm not saying don't feel the feels I'm not saying don't be mad that I talked to you away and then on top of it address it with me I'm here for it like yo you were out of line I'm I apologize my, that was not my intent. I know, and I'll tell you, I know I can be aggressive. I I can be highly, highly competitive when it comes to what we're doing. It's about expectations, and I'm sorry if I spoke to you out of turn. I just wanted you to get back in the game. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I want to have the conversation, and I I guarantee you, if I hurt you, I will apologize for it. Not you, Lenny, but to most people, <laughs> you and the other one, I'm not apologizing to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, you have yet to hurt us. Um, well, there you go. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Like, but no. But even if I cross, like, if I said something, and, and and I can be reckless. I know this. You know what I mean? Because again, especially if you're in that. Is that situation, because you're a woman? Men are. 
<laughs> men are more reckless than women are. How? I, never mind. See, I'm not going there. And I'm not going to do it because that would be something I'll end up having to apologize for. And I'm not going to. So I'm not going to make my own point. Damn, she didn't take the bait. No. I wish Lars was here. <laughs> right. I'm sure he wishes he was here for this one too. But no, it's just it's it's frustrating on on a few different levels. And I guess it, when we talk about workplace and we talk about equality, like it's one of those things where people talk to me about adjusting it and I'm now just like no, I don't want to. Because at no, the end of the shouldn't. day, it's it's about leveling up. Like I'm constantly pushing myself to be better, to do better. Now being a total and complete cunt bucket, not okay, not okay. Like I, you know, but I'm not picking on your your weight. Like I'm not coming yes. for you. This is literally about performance and accountability and getting the job done. Like I'm not, I'm not a mean spirited individual like that. Like I'm not just mm -hmm. being an asshole to be an asshole. So I think that there comes a point in time where it's like. If you step back in, and I've had to when deal it comes with that. to game time, you're the coach, and well, you want to be you want to be out there screaming, get it done. But it's because it's ha like it's made me better. I feel like you. Do you know what I mean. Like even the person that I work with again, Laz, like him and I. Ha oh my god, when I tell you some of the fights that we've had, holy shit! But it made him better. It made me Did better. Did he ever make you cry? Did he make me cry? Yeah. Well. If you have to think about it, then no, no, that was we had the conversations that that we've had are are just highly charged, are just charged in emotional conversations. I honestly don't have those conversations with Laz. You just fight. For that reason. No, no, no. Just They just really wouldn't More go. More sexual tension? No. Ew. Oh. Don't be disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. No. 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 No, get this. Come here. Come back with the camera. Absolutely not. No to the sexual tension. No. But you know... I pick and choose my battles, Len. You and I can have certain very heated conversations, mm -hmm. and I know that we will bounce back from it. There's other people that I just choose to avoid having those conversations with. It's kind of why we have this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. We've gotten to that place where there's more people that yeah. people choose to avoid having those conversations with than there are people that they're yeah, willing you, to engage because, in that. Because you want those people to stay in your life and you want to yeah, be friends with them exactly. on some level. Why, exactly. why, go, why go someplace you know that could ruin Especially that? if you already know how they feel. You know yes. what I mean? If you already know that you fundamentally disagree on something that is charged in that way, just avoid yeah. it. Avoid it. But no, like literally, I'm an eye roller. So he, oh my goodness, I, used, I told you, I used to like make the, the vein and I'd be like, you're going to have a heart attack. And he gets so <laughs> bad. I love you. Um, so yeah, like I mean, I I I'm flawed, heavily flawed, and again, I admit that though, and it's like I guess maybe that's where I have a problem with other people because I see nothing wrong with owning your flaws, right? And then telling people who you are. These are the things that trigger me. These are the things that push my buttons. And once you start to own those things, I think it can make you better you know what i mean but this particular individual just needs to realize like yo being in your feelings is cool but not right now it's like imagine a doctor right losing yeah. their shit like like you know you've got something you're doing like, a oops surgery, i cut that oh you know? my god and i can't do like, anything you know, else doc, like we see it all the time like on er right like doc what are you doing like <laughs> oh shit you know what i mean but imagine they just got completely out of their game right mm -hmm. like you know how many lives would be lost yeah. You can't, you've just, you've got to be able to like take it, put it in the back of your mind and go, hey, I'm going to come back to this later. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, I, I just, I don't know how to, how to broach that subject with, with. I think you're doing it right now. Like you said, no, with a man though, like, and to your point, like with a dude, because yeah. again, not emotional. He's not a pussy. He's not, it, it's not that. Yeah. But it's like, you're literally watching somebody crumble under the pressure. Right. And you're like, it's not that fucking serious like because you're good you're good at what you do you made a mistake right or you know yeah shit happens so what do you do in that situation though like as the boss what do you do if i make a mistake well no like if you have employee like how do you get people out of that space like when we talk about mcf up and, and encouraging that in people listen i'm an asshole it's just clear i'm very aggressive i'm very outspoken oh, great i'm fucking lenny i haven't <laughs> <laughs> shit not literally 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean it that way. Ow, I just hit myself in the head. So I haven't, the people that are around me, yeah. short of family, don't really they they bounce right back from it they okay. they they do you hire that way they you know it's you see we have a very light staff mm -hmm. and it's mainly because you know i i'm i just need people that are you know like-minded thick-skinned i mean because this is just the environment we live in i you know everybody i've tried to hire women and i have to tell them up front i'm like hey you know we're a testosterone company we're mm -hmm. it's called man the fuck up you might hear us talking about fat bitches or some shit like that. Just don't take it personally. You can't take it personally. You know, I'm not, I don't, I try not to set myself up for that mm -hmm. kind of issue because it's clear it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, we're guys sitting around. It's funny because the, our team in India, one of the girls uh, there, you know, that's, they're very, mm -hmm. and I crack Indian jokes all day long. I'm like, hey, did you fucking have your cousin crank call me again, Rakesh? You know, it's like, <laughs> It's mm -hmm. so my team luckily bounces back. Some people don't take it as well. The criticism, you know, like, uh, I, you know, I, I just I get to a point with people where and I, I've told Nestor this. I'll give people enough rope to hang themselves. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like after a certain amount of that back and forth where. We're getting nowhere type of thing. Mm -hmm. I'll just cut them loose and hey, you know, you're sorry, but you're you're on your own. And it's difficult. It's difficult for me to to deal with people like that. I just yeah. I, I don't I I just don't understand. I guess maybe in the corporate structure, like when because like obviously there's no HR here. You are HR. Yeah. Yeah. Um so it's like if you have a complaint, it's yeah, bring it to HR. He's right here, and he's yeah. probably the source of your complaint. Just drop it in that box right <laughs> he's there. Probably the source of drop, your drop it in that in silver file cabinet right there. <laughs> but, but to me, I feel like if you're walking on, and it's funny because I've I've always been in corporate because yeah. clearly it's that's rare. Egg eggshell society. Well, it's rare that you own a radio station, right, or a television station, mm -hmm. or whatever, um, independently. And I can remember sitting in a meeting, and it was it was supposed to be one of those meetings. Right where HR is there, but they're encouraging everybody to speak openly. Well, if you encourage me to speak openly, I'm going to speak <laughs> openly. And they're like, <gasps> you know, you can see the look on their face. And I'm like, listen, if I what the fuck you, it's out of love. Like, you know what I mean? If if I come for you in that way, like, and it and it seems aggressive, it's never going to be personal. Like, I'm never coming at you on some personal shit. Like, like. Because I, I love you. Like, that's not what this is. If I'm coming at you aggressively, it's about business. Mm -hmm. And as a company, you should be encouraged by that because it's kind of like, okay, she's trying to super serve our client. She just wants to win. She wants to do the best job that she can. And she's holding other people accountable to that. And I'm just like, we should be able to have these conversations with one another and still respect – because they come from a place of respect. And it's amazing how many people will look you in your face and say that. But then when they're in that situation, yeah, they totally do. definitely cannot handle it. Or then we'll go to HR and we'll be on that whole like, yeah, so I'm a little, I'm intimidated or I, like whatever. And it's like intimidating how? Like I literally just bought your kid a first communion outfit. I don't like, like I'm, I don't know. It just, it bugs me out because I just, why doesn't everybody just want to be great? And I know I sound like <laughs> DJ Khaled That's right funny. now. But That's funny. But if we're pushing each other to be the best that we can be and we're holding each other accountable, like as much as I may not like what you have to say, if I fuck something up and you tell me that, I may push back a little bit. But when I leave, you know, I, not everybody takes their job that seriously. Not everybody, not everybody has a work ethic or a or a, a drive for that for that kind of excellence. They just don't have it. But. Is it really about that or is it about understanding? I think there's a bigger humanity question there in the sense of taking the time to think about where somebody is coming from when they're saying it, right? Is it coming from a place of malice? Is it coming from a place of disrespect? Is it coming from an, you know, an well, that goes back to my That goes back to my HR questionnaire. If we're talking about some nasty shit, we're not talking about you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we're just men, yep. and we're talking about some nasty shit. And if you happen to overhear it, 
don't let it get up but in your feelings. The funny thing is, women talk about nasty shit too. Yeah, like, but stop you know, playing. I mean, we make fun of fat girls or this or that. You know, and we and, make fun of little dicks. Like, yeah, okay. there you go. I mean, they, but they, except the only in in a man's defense, you really can't tell he's got a little dick. But you can tell she's a fat bitch. Well, you can tell. If, you, know? <laughs> you can tell if he's a big fat slob. Yes. That yes. his dick, no matter how big it is, is yeah, probably going to be dwarfed. Yes. By that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, we can do this. Like, and that's the thing is like everybody needs to stop playing. Like when it comes to business, because I feel like I know that we have the gender conversation all the time, but like in business situations, I would really prefer that we don't see it that way and we don't get to pick and choose as women we don't get to pick and choose either you want it to be equal across the board right or it's gonna be male chauvinist pig like i and i know that that sounds crazy to say but it's like you know why hmm, i don't know like i don't know because now this conversation is going in a different direction but i'm like as as we're talking about this it's like you having to warn women right about the climate of your company, right? It, it's why should you have to curb what makes you guys you and what what makes this gel and vibe and work? Because you've now added somebody else who came and applied for the job. I love that you give them the option, like, hey, this is what it is. And and again, it's knowing yourself. Don't put yourself in a situation. Like, I'm yes, okay with that. That's a big, I'm okay that's with locker room thing. talk. I'm okay with being around male chauvinists because that you know, if you cross the line and Lenny knows it, I've been like, what the fuck are you talking? Like, I have I no mean, problem I, saying. I would love to hear like him. a female basketball reporter in the HR department. You know, I mean, what is she going to say? If she goes into the locker oh. room to to interview basketball players after a game, yeah, you know, I mean, it, so no, it's you, different. If it's different if somebody disrespects her, listen, but overhearing if, but if conversation, putting, yeah, but if you're putting yourself in that kind of position, you mm. clearly are putting. You're walking into a men's locker room with a bunch of guys who are charged up after winning a okay, game. What? So they should be able to slap you in the ass? Absolutely not. No, I, I didn't say touch. Did I say touch? But you're going to see things, hear things. Yeah, but you they know. don't need to be directed at you. Well, That's like if you're, you're not the only woman walking to a room full of men. Mm, now you're, you're going to no, get. There might taking, be some heckling. Now you're taking this. No, no I'm that, just saying no, you're putting no better. You're be putting better. yourself in a position. No, there. She's just trying to do her job. Let me do my job because you're not doing that same shit. I just said equality. You're not hollering at the dude that just walked in. So it's different. That's what I'm saying. When I'm saying uh, some of the guys is, might. Well, no, they're not. <laughs> you never it's know. still professional sports. I'm not saying that they're not thinking it. <laughs> that I'm not saying. But they're probably yeah, they're not probably outwardly. Not gonna, yeah, they're not, yeah, they're they're not, not gonna, outwardly. They're not going to howl it because of their. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? No, but they're the ones who are howling at the girl when she walks mm. in. <laughs> But my point is, I, I'm going to definitely draw the line there and disagree. Equality is equality. And how you would treat a male reporter is exactly how you should treat a female reporter. And she should expect the locker room talk around it. Now, if you're talking about the, the baddie that was sitting in the, row yeah, behind yeah. The, in the row behind the team bench, that's a different I'm situation. Bad. I smutted her out. Yeah, you don't get to go to HR because you overheard that conversation. Now, what you can do is be like, ooh, ladies, <laughs> you want to get some Twitter pub. You know what I mean? Don't. I'm not going to name names, but if you live in Detroit, uh -huh. no, there was some conversations happening in the locker room. You know what I mean? But no, like to me, you don't get to be sensitive. Like I walked into Man TF Up knowing exactly what I was walking into. I can't come in here demanding change and now all of a sudden you be PC. Now, I can ask you, we've had many conversations about that, Lynn. Why do you feel the need to use this word or why do you feel the need to say this? But I have yet to tell you, stop calling women bitches. And y'all can get mad at me if you want to, but that is Lenny and that is what it is. And I personally am not offended by it because I call women bitches. Yes, I'm and clearly just quoting Snoop. Okay, you're not doing that, but okay. Own your bitches shit. She's in the living room. Getting it on. <laughs> I That's sing as good as you. Time. That's the one <laughs> rap reference I've ever heard in life. I know a lot of them. Okay. Well, my point is... I didn't come in here trying to change anybody. I'm comfortable with it. And that's the other thing. I'm not going to play sensitive. You know what I mean? When, again, I say, what's up, bitch? Like, again, you know, we had that conversation with mm -hmm. Stella and whatever. So I just, again, I want equality. And I don't want to have to take into consideration who or what I'm dealing like, like that part of it. Because, again, when we're off the air and we're done working, and we go back to our personal relationship, then I'm going to ask you all of the questions. Do you know what I'm saying? Let's go. Like, let's go back to the other end of the spectrum. Let's say you guys didn't get along at all outside of the work environment. Mm -hmm. You're still going to expect them to do 100%. the best job. 
100%. You know? I've never not gotten along. Like, that's very difficult for me, Lenny, to work in a place uh, where I, I get, don't, well, like, where I don't, if I don't like you out, if I well, don't like you I mean, you if there's one person, person that, if there's one person that, you know, you just, you don't want to have anything to do with outside of our job, which is this, you know, Lenny, four or five imagine we didn't like each other outside of this. Yeah, well. I don't think we could do this. Like, I, I no, couldn't I, do. I, I feel you, but, like, you know, what if you didn't like Nestor? You wouldn't have a problem. I don't like Nestor. I know. <laughs> I love Nestor. I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, like, if you didn't like Nestor, yeah. you could still sit here and yeah, do yeah, this yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so I'm, it, but, but this particular situation, I understand what you're saying in the grand scheme of yeah, things. Yeah, and you yeah. want Nestor to do the best job possible. Always, yeah. Yeah, so... You know. Yeah, I've definitely, I take that back, I've definitely worked with people that I did not vibe with, you know, but I didn't have to spend that much time. I think it's different when you spend an intimate level of time, like, mm -hmm. like again, with what I do, it's a very hard reference point unless you work in a very close-knit kind of situation like that where you spend a lot of time discussing, again, charged topics, things like. Yeah, and, some, and it's also someone else who can make you look good or bad. Yes. That's a big difference. Yeah. You're you're putting your trust in someone else's hands, yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, like, but for you, like, I don't think if you didn't, well, I mean, you probably could. You're, you're really good at, I think, separating. Like, if Nestor was incredible, sorry, Nestor, we're using you. If Nestor was incredible at what he does and you just hated him as a person, could uh, you do it? You know, in, in maybe in the short term, like, if I needed Nestor to do something and... And, you know, then that was the end of it. But no, I couldn't work with people every day. I well, I was going to say, I feel like you spend I, a lot of time with Nestor. Like, you guys do a lot together. Like, and it, so again, it's being around somebody like that that you don't like. Like, I mean, that he's a little creepy sometimes, but. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I can't. Thing. There's There is people that I've worked with that I just, I can't fucking stand, mm -hmm. you know? But if, if I. For some reason, I want them to work with me or I, you know, whatever the case may be, I'll just make a separation between me and that person. And and, you know, here it's about work, communicate what I need to communicate. And the rest of it's, you know, I'm out here. Yeah. And and I'm very weird when it comes to that shit. Well, well, I was trying to think, like, I, I've never... I don't have any fucking friends. I've never been in a situation where I was going to quit. Well, again, because... But here's the deal. Family is not friendship, and you know Yes, that, I know that. Right? Like, because you can love somebody like family. It doesn't necessarily mean you like them. And you can be... 99% dis fam of families are dysfunctional, which is why I, I tend to use that family reference when it comes to work. Because when you work with people in yeah. intense, high-pressure environments very closely for extensive periods of time... That's a family dynamic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that is not necessarily They friends. don't call it the work wife and the work husband for yes. nothing. Yes. Do you know that that's a thing now? And people are, like, very upset about it. That can be a conversation next week that we have. Oh, you mean, like, HR's problem with it? Bro. My work husband. It was a whole thing on the internet about how disrespectful that is. Oh, my God. Yeah, this guy used to work for me. Oh. be like, that shoulder to cry on becomes a dick to ride on. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's one of those things. You know what? Well, there was our moment for this episode with Lenny. Lenny's always got one for him. Uh, always yeah. got one for the road. Well, Len, I don't know that I've gotten anywhere with this conversation in terms of how to make it better, but I definitely have vented about it. Um, to all my strong, ambitious, aggressive... Um, ladies. Yeah, ladies. I was trying to figure out some other, you know, adjectives that have been used to describe me. Don't back down and don't change because a man wouldn't. And I'm not trying to be an asshole about yeah. that. But to me, like the qualities that we get looked down upon for are the qualities that we have held against us or, or that are kind of marks on our, you know, mm -hmm. on our board are the same qualities that define some of the best leaders you know, when it comes to men or yeah. Fortune 500 it's, CEO. It's a shame, president. but for women to get that same respect, they have to be, you know, above and beyond. They have to be. And and some might construe that as, as what, what were all the but it's, adjectives yeah. you were using to describe yourself? Because uh, I don't want to use any. No, but Lenny, like as, as, as it's, machismo as you are. Not really. I don't think that you would hold that against a, like I feel like that's an intimidation thing. I feel like yes. for men being scold they they view being 
critiqued by a woman as being scolded by a woman. And when you when you process it that way, it's a sign of your immaturity and insecurity in yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it was coming from a man, I think sometimes you can puff your chest up a little bit. Well, like you look at it as like, it's constructive criticism. Whereas when a woman does it, it's bitching or, oh, like she just wanted to make me look bad. And it's like, no motherfucker, I want you to be great. Like, I want you to be great. Why is it okay for a coach to, to curse your ass out? Why is it okay, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and on top of that, I'm not your boss. I'm your peer. We're in this thing together. It's not my job to figure out the best way to motivate and manage you. That's your job, Len. As the owner of a company, it's yes. your job to figure out the best way to get the most out of each of your employees. Yep. But it's not their job to figure that shit out when they're doing a team project, right? It's their job to perform at the best level they can and then to hold their teammates accountable to the same thing, yep. right? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know, if you like I said, if you're going to put in 110 percent, you expect everybody else to put in 110 percent. And that's what makes it great. That's what makes that's what makes great things. That's the difference between good and great. Having a team that's all on the same page, working at the same level is the difference mm -hmm. between a good show and a great show. Yes. Facts. And, and you look at you see it with all the sitcoms. You know, you can't have sitcoms don't last mm -hmm. if the cast isn't. No. And there are some situations together. where they don't necessarily get along outside of that mm -hmm. but when they come to work they check that shit at the door mm -hmm. and they rise up right they they it's p being professional like just because you don't like the food somebody cooks it's, it's just figuring that out and so to anybody watching right now if you're dealing with those situations or listening in the workplace you know what i mean i can only suggest that if you find yourself in a funk every time you get criticized critiqued reprimanded or if you mess up if you're if you're one of those people who's just your worst critic and you're hard on yourself do not let it affect the rest of your performance from that moment on i'm not saying don't think about it i'm not saying don't leave and and again try to figure out how you could have done it better because that's what makes us all grow right we learn mm. from our mistakes but in that moment you got to act like it didn't happen you got to take it don't hem and haw and the rest of it and don't be all in your feels and mad that somebody said it in front of this person or that person while you're working right when you leave be mad about it when you're in your car when you've clocked out when you're you know whatever the case may be and then address it I say address it. If somebody, if you feel yeah. somebody disrespected you, if you feel somebody came at you crazy, if you feel, you know, there was a better way to handle that situation on their part, don't hold that in either because then that'll have you, you know, all worked up. You'll be, what is that called? Like you're kind of like Pent stewing, yeah. right? Like you're thinking about, oh, Pent they talked to me this way and blah, 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 blah. Like the next day and the day after. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big problem with this whole scenario is... Once that person gets that feeling mm -hmm. from you, they can't, they, they don't know how to change that. They don't, you know, it, it might have been in a moment that you or I felt a certain way, mm -hmm. but now that, that moment is what's going to stick out in their mind forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the whole making you cry thing. <laughs> I, that's something that I'll never forget. Yeah. And we've had so much more than yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But that moment sticks out of my mind. So that happens with people you're yeah. close with, working with, that, you know, that, and you need to, you, you need to address that. Yeah. And say, hey, you know, I'm sorry I was a nasty whatever. Yeah. You know, but, and, 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 but it's only because, yeah. you know. And Lenny, we've had many a fight since then. And I haven't yeah, I, I understand. cried. I'm just saying, I, like, I, so. I, I get it. So, but no, but you're very right about that. And back to that HR conversation, though. Y'all need to back up. <laughs> HR needs to, you need to let people have conversations. I'm not saying let people put hands on it. That's not what I'm talking about. But there needs to be, there needs to be healthy discord. Like there needs to be able, healthy yeah. disagreement and conversation and conflict resolution and all of that. And if people feel that they cannot express those things, that's when you end up with the blow up or that's when you end up with poor performance. Because, yeah. you know, if you foster that, communication between teammates where you can say what you need to say in the moment and then you also are encouraged to come behind it and be like listen you know it may have had nothing to do with you those tears might have been something else or that that frustration mm -hmm. and that's on me to be woman enough in that situation to come and be like yo 
that had nothing to do with you and I apologize. I had no right to take that out on you. And that takes a big person. But on the flip side of it, when it is about you, I need to be able to express it and you know, and it's and it's taken just at and face not hurt value. Your feelings, yeah. yeah, it's taken at face. I just want you to be better because I know you can be better. Like the shit works in sports. Yeah, kids don't go to HR on their yeah. coaches. In I mean, league. listen, how many times have you seen a a high level athlete, gymnast, runner mm-hmm. fall right in the middle of their routine? Trip on a hurdle. Yeah. You know what they do? They get up and they finish the fucking yeah. race or they finish the routine and they do it to their mm-hmm. best of their ability. Well, it's like Barry Bonds. You'd think if he, he could have struck out three times, but you think the next time he goes up, he's thinking he's going to strike out? No, he's thinking, I'm going to hit a home run. Yeah. It's, it's Sorry, you know, it might not have been the best example, but uh, whatever. <laughs> but yes, it, it's, it's, we need to start teaching people that. And again, I'm, I'm not mad at feels, I'm not mad at, at, at being emotional and being hard on yourself and all of that. But there's another part of that, which is still being able to manage those emotions in the moment and get the job done. Yeah, man the fuck up. Yes, exactly. Man the fuck up, please. All right, it's a wrap. Yeah. Thank you for watching the Man TF Up podcast. Or listening. Oh, yeah. I Just because we have the camera that always. Yeah, you know. How weird is that? That I'm a radio person that makes a living off of people listening. Yeah, I heard that conversation. And I yeah. always just assume. Remember when you used to be, you got a face for radio. <laughs> the first time I ever heard that. It's like the second I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Now that was disrespectful. <laughs> Anyway, listen, like, subscribe, share, follow, leave your comments. If you've got anything you think uh, we should talk about, at Kimmy Be Official, you can slide in the DMs, at uh, Um, If you see anything great on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook that sparks your interest and you're like, hey, they should have a conversation about this, we would love to see it. And we will see you next week. And don't forget, if you want to email us, Kimmy B at mantfuptv.com. Yeah, that too. Peace. <laughs>